Hey, welcome back to the shed. I'm Candace. I'm Lonnie. <laughs> <laughs> Today, uh, we're out here on a Sunday working. Uh, we hit to um, estate sales this morning. They were okay. We picked up a few things. So we're going to show you what we found and then we're going to get a head start on pulling orders um, just to get ahead of tomorrow's pulling. Yeah, we, uh, we, we've been finding like the past few Mondays, which is a really good thing. Um, I basically am just packing from morning till the end of end of the day almost or pretty much mm -hmm. with a few like still doing a few other little things like some video work or something but i usually don't have any time to list and i'm usually burnt out on the packing by the time the day's over so i i appreciate yeah uh, just going ahead and getting a head start here yeah we're gonna pull like some easy things or, just yeah. to get those out the way yep um yeah we went to two estate sales this morning uh one we bought nothing and then the other one, I bought some things and they're a stretch. So um, we'll see. I spent $14.50. So um, let's show you what we got. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Slim pickings yeah. this morning. These are Bellini brand, which is not like a super high end brand. I think they retail for between like 75 and 100. You're saying Bellini? Bellini. Like okay. Bellini. Uh, um, the reason I got them, I just thought they have a cool look. Like they would look great, like with a witch costume or whatever. Mm -hmm. it would. So I think it's a good time of year to list these styles. Um, I think I can list them for maybe thirty. Are you gonna put witch costume in your uh, uh, yeah, title? Yeah, I am, and Victorian because they've got like yeah th these functional buttons here. So okay, yep. Um, paid a. Why do witches wear shoes like that? I don't. I don't. I don't know. If they really <laughs> do or. Do they what? also wear pointy hats? I know. Do we? We always we have this image. I think I feel like we have this image that uh, just like caught like stores that sell costumes have given us like this is what a witch looks like. I actually you know what it's probably from. It's probably from Wizard of Oz. However, Wizard of Oz Where chose. Where did they get that from? Well, however, Wizard of Oz portrayed the witch. Mm -hmm. That's how we still look at witches, right? When I think of modern day witches, I think of Stevie Nicks, and it's funny. Like last week. I read where she supposedly said, I don't even think it was a quote, that she was never a witch, just she wore so much black because it was slimming that people just started saying she was a witch and probably her behavior too, Right. you know. <laughs> so I thought that was interesting. Um, we got a cookbook for a dollar. This is um, from a crew, a carnival crew out of Lake Charles. So I thought that was cool. I like the graphics on the front. Crew de la famille de Lac Charles. <laughs> And then, okay, they had a fill a bag for $5, and they had these this box of dolls out there. So I just stuffed them all in a bag. I, I figured for $5, maybe one of them would be worth something, just taking a chance. Mm -hmm. It's almost like a, a lottery scratch-off card. Yeah, thing. for being out in the garage in a box, they're in mm -hmm. good shape. You know, and some of them are, like, really old. I think Man, you, look at the eyes on that one. Yeah, you really made a, uh, I think you made a good move there. She looks pretty old to me, too. Look at her. Is that? That's plastic. Oh, it's plastic. Yeah. Look like porcelain. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, even if you don't, even if you don't hit on a winner here, I think you made the right move. Like uh, that's the better. That's it, a good strategy. It'll increase my uh, knowledge too. You know, by looking each of these up, um, just to know what to not buy them in the future or to buy them. I wouldn't yeah. be shocked if these weren't really worth. This is a Madame Alexander. She she looks like she might be something decent. She's got big eyes, that's yeah. for sure. And you, hey, if nothing else, you got some doll stands. I already have you want those, them. yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, yeah, I thought that'd be fun, just something to play around with. So is that all we bought? Yeah. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah, yeah that's it. All right, well, that's fine. You know what, if you if you go to garage sales and estate sales and you fill up the truck every time you go, um, you probably, maybe you're not being choosy enough. Yeah, we're not, know. we're not like just buying to be buying stuff. Cause there was stuff we probably could have bought uh, or dug a little deeper. I don't know. I I didn't see anything I wanted. They had a these. ton of books at the at this sale. Um, I guess we could have spent a lot of time looking through. The yeah, books. yeah. A lot of religious books and stuff. So I, I um, looked through some of them. Yeah. Uh, but we are gonna go ahead and pull some eBay orders now. All right, Candace, you ready? I'm ready. Are you ready? Uh, no. It's <laughs> Sunday. I, I'm supposed to be chilling. Like we're gonna do this and then probably just relax the rest of the day. Yeah. I don't know. All right, eight, Charlie. I'm gonna probably, probably play some RuneScape and drink me some uh, some white claw. Some white claws. Yeah, I filled <laughs> up the 
I put, I brought some, uh, y'all want to see what's in the fridge right now? We've what's got, I just took the last soda out. We've got some, uh, what is this? Some sandwich pal. We've got some, uh, Tabasco brand sriracha because the, uh, the other kind you can't find. The, the chicken kind you can't get. I don't even. The chicken, the rooster, you mean? <laughs> well, I was going to use the C word for it, and oh, I was like, oh, I better just say chicken. The cock doodle do kind? Stop. <laughs> and then, yeah, we got some kind of protein shake. Oh, one pack of ketchup. So, yeah, that's that's the state of our fridge right yeah. now. <laughs> looks like a bachelor's fridge for sure. It does. It looks like a RuneScape player's fridge. That's yeah. what it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> All right. First item is a Sony Handicam on 8 Charlie. Yeah, we have two Sonys going out. I listed two Sonys. I listed two Sonys last week, and we sold two Sonys. Love it. Yep, this is it right here. That's all for one twenty. This one is the D Mini DV Sony Handycam. Mm -hmm. That and one was from Kevin Danielle by. Yep. Okay. That's what that's from. All right, on five Foxtrot, a Dyson Motorhead. Not really motor powerhead, I guess. Powerhead, yeah. Motorhead is like a, a band. Yeah. <laughs> but that's uh that's the one that had old Lemmy in it, right? They did that Ace of Spades song. Right? Am I wrong? I don't know. Where am I going? Hey Charlie. Are you sure? No, five fox trot. Five fox trot, okay. Hey Charlie was the song. I knew I knew that wasn't right. Alright, here we go. I was trying to see. We had an eBay notification. I think it was just an eBay message. Probably letting us know that our uh, Alice pack is active now. Yeah. <laughs> um, under the bench, a D Spirits booster box that we picked up the other day. Sold one. Yeah. Of all that stuff we bought, this was... The first thing to sell. Well, this, yeah, it was the first thing to sell. And also, I think this is the one that we're most in danger of getting stuck with. Yeah, so we want those to sell. Right? We want these to sell. The other stuff, like, like backpacks, we have, they'll sell. The backpacks will sell, even if we have to put them on sale or something. Yeah. But this is the kind of thing where, when nobody wants it, nobody wants yeah, it. Yeah, when people quit playing it, nobody wants it. Right, I've seen it. <laughs> so we got twenty-five for that. So we have seventeen left to go. Uh, twenty-five D Spirit boxes of D Spirits trading card game things under on the, the wall bench. under the bench, under the bench. <laughs> 25 boxes oh, i need to work on these lyrics okay. <laughs> uh, two bravo samsung galaxy gear smartwatch yeah i just listed this yesterday this is from the latest kevin and danielle buy also this watch is in mint condition man like yeah. it, it looked like you probably wore it once or twice this was kevin's personal thing yeah we sold that for 70. okay um, on four Delta, we sold those Crown Royal bags we picked up Friday. Yeah, I just listed them. For fifteen. I don't know if I would. Yeah, I listed them cheap. And when I was looking at the Crown Royal, here we go, Crown Royal, and you see I put RTS on there. That means ready to ship, which basically means it has a thank you card in it already. But yeah, but the Crown Royal bag market is looking a little weak yeah i don't know what happened some of them youtubers must have ruined they it saturated the market <laughs> one delta a lot of five my little ponies okay mlp these are the wonder bolts the wonder bolts candace says let's see huh do you remember what those are no i don't Flying acrobatics team. Oh, that's right. Are they from Romania or something? <laughs> for 25. Okay. 10 Bravo. I don't remember even listing this. What is it? Some mini mates um, from. This Hulk. is some guy, guy buy stuff. Thor Ragnarok movie. Yeah. They're in the package. Where are they at? 10 Bravo. Yeah. Oh, man. These have been listed a while. How many is it? It's a package with two figures. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah. That's it right here. Sakor, Loki, and Heimdall. I don't know anything about any of this stuff. Like, when it comes to Marvel movies, like, really, when it comes to movies, except for a few, like, we went and watched Indiana Jones. It was that, pretty yeah, good. That doesn't count because it's current, but it's really not. It's like throwback movie. You know? yeah, I mean, it was... 
I, I enjoyed the movie. Had some great scenes. Harrison Ford is too old. He I, looks old. He does, but he did, he did a great job. He, he did okay. Well, I, think, I think he did great. He did okay. It, it was very much in the vein. It was very much like Top Gun, Maverick. It was it was enjoyable experience to watch. Maybe they waited a little too long to do it. Like it Tom Cruise was fine, obviously. Like he's I don't know. He's Yeah, he's got a new Mission Impossible movie out. Yeah, but was he, was he But it's this it? it's this thing where they're just all they're doing is just working off of the nostalgia of the first movie. Yep. It's the same thing with the like the in my opinion like the Indiana Jones movie, it, like it they basically just rewrote yeah, the they first brought, movie. They brought in the quirky little kid, which was like short round from the second movie. <laughs> right. You know, and then, um, I don't know. It was very similar yeah. to the, like, there was nothing new right. going on. They kind of just reworked everything. Yeah, it was okay, though. I mean, it was enjoyable. All right. And the, I would never, it's not the movie I would want to watch again. I'll no, say that. No, no. I, do, I mean, I do watch the other ones when they come on. Yeah, we watched the first one the other day. Like yeah. to me, that's a timeless one there. Yeah. But that that last one, what is it called? The dial something. Dial of the something. All right. All right. Uh, we sold a boomerang in the Digimon drawer. Okay. Ten dollars for that. Go down there and throw it to me and see if I catch it or if it comes back to you. Go, okay. Are you serious? All right. Ready? No. <laughs> I don't think that's how you throw them, huh? Is that how you throw them? I don't know. Let me try. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sell that for 10. Okay. I thought they were throwing sideways. That was, uh, I don't know. I might be wrong. That was Kevin and Danielle by also. Yeah. All right. Say, Charlie, we sold another juicer part. A good one. This is a dome, a fruit dome. Eight, eight Charlie juicer. You did say eight Charlie, correct? Yeah. It's a big metal thing, right? Yeah, it's a silver dome. How am I not, how would I not see a silver dome? I probably put the wrong location. Or unless it's behind this. I don't think so, it's big. No, there's no way. All right, we got a lost thing, Majig. Check down below. Oh, Candace, you're worthless. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> okay. All right, cut. Okay, we've been looking for about five minutes now, which is the good thing. That's the good thing about having open shelves. There are some drawbacks, but we can just walk and look mm -hmm. pretty easily. Let me show y'all what we're looking for. Okay, so this is what we're looking for, and I think Candace and I both, how big do you think this is? I thought it was like this big. I thought it was a little bigger than that even. I found it. The, the issue was, I was I thought it was something right, way bigger, so I never thought it could be behind this oh, cup. it was on H. Charlie. Yeah, it's on the right shelf. I just didn't realize how small it was. Mm -hmm. Isn't that smaller than you thought? Yeah, I thought it was probably about. They have the other part that was bigger. Yeah. Okay. So that I think went under. Maybe, oh no. I don't know, but thirty-five dollars for this part. Yeah. Whew. Man, we made bank on that. I could have used the juicer a little while ago. I was making marinade with lemons and uh, oranges and limes. Man, did we make bank on that whole juicer buy or what? Yeah. Yep. Big time. I mean, what we? I think that's the last part too. We need to pull it up and see what we ended up making. We'll uh. Yeah, well, well, I'll flash like pictures of all the solds for that juicer buy, but I'm trying to remember. We didn't pay much. I think it was like fifteen, maybe. I, that's exactly the number I was thinking, fifteen dollars. Yeah. So, so uh, that's worked out really well. Yep. All right. Uh, the next item is on two Delta, another Sony Handy Cam. Yep. Gotta love them. Sony Handy Cams are. Sony handy cams have been like rock solid sellers for that's something that hadn't changed since I've been a reseller. And they sell pretty quick. They do. If we you sold if you test them and make sure they work, you know. Both of them in a week. Yeah, 150 for that one. This this one we bought on like Wednesday. 
Yes. We woke up. Candace said, hey, there's that guy's having a sale. I'm like, all right, let's go. I didn't even argue because you know that sale is the one, if y'all watch the channel a lot, where we bought books for $5, like four or five books? Mm -hmm. five. five. And we sold them for almost a grand. Yep. So I was like, okay, yep, yeah, we're going. And uh, yeah, he had this camera out there for $10 and tested and everything, sold for 150 yep. a few days later. Yep. All right, next item is on the alien drawer. Super Mario Kart for SNES. $30. Yep, and it's even got the little whatever Detector. that cover thing is, whatever you call that. All right, we sold a um, vintage Realtree camo sweater that we got from Kevin and Danielle. It's on Ford Delta and it has rattler, rattlers. Okay. Always glad to see clothing and stuff sell. Let's see if I can find it. Shit, I think it's probably fairly close to the top. Rattlers camo, that's it right there. And this came from, I don't know, Kevin and Danielle buy number three or four. Or something. I don't know, I'm losing track of them. Yeah, sold that for 40. Okay, that's really good. Pocket 51 and 64 expansion pack. 51 right here. And this is the kind with the red. This is OEM, but the, the OEM ones with the red, for those of y'all that aren't familiar with video game stuff, uh, this is basically extra memory for your N64 that you need to play some games. 45 for that. Okay. In the cube, Danbury Mint and the World of the Saints ornament. Okay. Yeah, we got an offer on this, and this like normally I wouldn't discount something Christmas in July. However, this ornament went through last Christmas. holiday season. Yeah. Without and, much interest. Right, and the offers we did get were really low. Now this offer was fair though. That like I want to say we paid like five dollars for that. Yeah. And uh, is that is that the right one? Yeah. Okay. We paid five dollars for that and they made an offer of 30 and candace was like take it take it yeah and i agree i, I want to take it too we didn't have hardly any the interest we did have last year was really low off yeah people so. were like 20 bucks i'm like nope yeah. 30 is good though yeah all righty um in the digimon drawer a brass weenie dog okay well that brass was so good wasn't it yeah it did good with that Ten dollars for him. He's cool. Yep. And I like the patina. Just a little bit of wear and corrosion. And last thing we're gonna pull today: Pocket sixty nine uh, GI Hasbro G one Transformers missile launcher and three missiles. Sixty nine. Got it right here. Yep. That's them. Yep. Sold that for eighteen. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and get this stuff packed here. And this is our head start on our weekend shipping. It's actually a really good start. We have, uh, I think we have a bunch of Monster High. We have a- There's like three Monster High that yeah. we didn't pull. And then some- and We have bigger, a UPS and then we have stuff. some glass. I didn't feel like packing today. Yeah. Uh, but so we'll, we'll be showing you all that kind of stuff tomorrow. But uh, yeah, I think we're gonna sign out of the shed for today. Although I'll show you all this stuff packed tomorrow, I guess, tomorrow morning when we come out. Yep. Bye for now. Good morning, everyone. It is the next day. Morning, Candace. Good morning. And I did not, we pulled the orders uh, yesterday. I did not pack them until this morning, though. That was pretty much the intention, I think. Yeah, yeah. but I, that did, sa that saves a lot of time. Yeah, you were able to just come in here and pack without I, us having to pull. W without us having to film or anything. I just came in here, put my, put my AirPod in and drank my coffee and packed for, I don't know, what time is it? see it was a pretty good while about two hours that's yeah. about that's close to two hours of packing yeah so uh we got these going out and then we have i think 20 more orders um to pull well maybe not 20. we have like one or two well one that sold. sold today so yeah it's it's like 18 or 19 so we're gonna go ahead and get those pulled now too okay i just went and uh, manhandled this huge box we took a large box you can see how we did it. 
And uh, this is where all of our lounge, well, most of the lounge fly is. We keep it on the shelf right here. Yeah. Not a whole lot of fun getting it down, but no. get, it gets the job done. Well, I mean, we had to, we've had, we're having to get creative with our storage. So um, that is the Nightmare Before Christmas one. It's black light reactive. Sold that for 35. Yeah. All right, next item is on two Bravo. It's the Navy Exchange tray. Oh yeah. This thing was cool. And let's see, where is it? Two Bravo. Two Bravo. And I looked at um I looked at that video where we were talking about rare versus uncommon, etc. <laughs> and I did notice some people said that's not rare because there were thousands of them made, or that's not rare. There might be some in a warehouse or that's not rare but our point is if it's not rare go, go buy, buy one right now go buy one go buy one right now i challenge you yeah. to buy one all right like it's gonna be difficult <laughs> so i guess i guess that's in that that's where the hard to find comes in because we don't really know if it's rare however maybe there's a warehouse full of these somewhere it's all semantic. I doubt it. Yeah. I don't know. I doubt it too. I don't know. If it's not rare, prove us wrong. Right. Prove me wrong that that's not rare. Right. Because I say it is. I, I was kind of arguing with the other day. But I the, the idea that we have to assume that there's like a million of those sitting somewhere. Yeah. And we just dream that up. And you, we say, oh, it's not rare because there's there's a lot of them made. That don't fly with me because I think rare, rare to us is you you'll have trouble going out and buying another one right now. Right, that's yeah, that's the way I I'll be rare in the reseller context. There anyway. could be a hundred, there could be a thousand of them in museums around the world, but you can't buy it. You know. Uh, that then it wouldn't be rare because you could actually just go look at them. I don't know. Let's move on. Okay. <laughs> All right, we sold another lounge fly on one alpha uh, Mickey Mouse jack o' lantern. One alpha. <laughs> That's why you said it again. Whenever she says the name of a shelf twice, I'm like, oh, I must be going the wrong way. Oh, this guy's, uh, he's built different too. He's not a backpack, he's like a purse, like a crossbody. Oh, he's kind of, yeah, he's hard. Yeah, well, he's, he's stuffed with stuff. Um, stuff with stuff? The paper. He, he's over 50. Okay. I wish we had more of those. Cause yeah. Because Halloween's coming. All right, we also sold from that buy the two Disney traditions. Mm -hmm. uh, Jack is on five Echo and Sally is on seven Charlie. Five Echo. Well, I'm glad they're staying together. Yeah. Echo. Oh, Echo's right here. Okay. I still can't believe that's a Disney property. <laughs> yeah. Which Lonnie, one is that? Lonnie thinks it's too dark. That That's Jack, I think. Well, it's weird, too. Don't, I mean, you got to admit, that is weird, right? Yeah. Like, there's nooses hanging from trees and stuff. <laughs> no, there was. Like I, skeletons, yeah. Which they also <laughs> have that in Pirates of the Caribbean. I know. But, I mean, I'm just saying, like, that's very dark imagery. You're right. So those together sold for a hundred. Okay. All right, on two Echo, we sold a set of four glass tiki mugs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love packing glass. I think these, oh wait, I'm not even sure. Wait, how, is this a quantity listing? All right, that is a quantity listing. All right. So we have, looks like we have enough, one more set left after that. Yeah, two sets of them okay uh, those sold for 36. oh wow that's pretty good mm -hmm. that's the happy sad where one side it's happy and the other side it's sad mm, okay um five bravo some harvard business school bookends man that is a that is a listing that's been up for a pretty good while that's one of those things whenever i bought them i was like man these are awesome and then and i still think they're really cool but uh after they don't sell for a while you just start to lose faith yeah it's a very uh, niche thing there well I, yeah they sell for 37 dollars and 49 cents i've actually been watching suits and uh everyone in that law firm 
That's the rule. Everyone in the law firm uh, comes from Harvard. Uh, all right, eight Bravo. We sold another brass piece, an owl. Okay. Well, that brass is selling fast. Oh, I noticed you said there was a gap in the seam. I mm -hmm. see it right here. It's I think weird. That was a production issue. I think they were supposed to solder it. Yeah. See, they 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 soldered the, a gap right here. Yeah. Unless for some reason it expanded with I don't know age or. Well, I mean, you could see like that's how it's made, like in two parts, yeah, or at I, least the base. I anyway. think it's just shoddy work. Hmm. It's um, it's a nice looking owl overall, though. Yeah. Uh, that one's over twenty. Okay. Six Bravo three X Files shooting scripts. Six Bravo. Yeah, so we bought a bunch of X Files stuff for $40. Mm -hmm. And um, we sold these for how much? 30. 30. And then we have something else that was sold just this morning that's going out tomorrow. From that buy. From that lot too, that's gonna get us to in the to being profitable already. Right. And we still have a lot of that stuff left too yep. that I haven't listed. And I'm happy that we sold two things very really quickly out of yeah. it, so that's good. Um, MU8, a Yamaha power supply for a keyboard. MU8? Yeah. Oh, that's behind me. It's Yamaha. Mm -hmm. I say Yamaha, but you can say Yamaha. I've heard it both ways. Mm -hmm. Got it. Okay. That's all for $10. All righty. We have a reel on four Bravo. No, we don't. It's not a real. It's a card. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> it's a trading card. Oh, okay. Four Bravo A five three. Okay, I'll I'll come back in a sec. Okay, I went ahead and pulled it right here. This says ten. How much did we sell it for? Eight eighty nine. Okay, that was on eleven percent off sale. <laughs> well, I I had the same items in there that have been run at ten percent off for like a bunch of times now. So, so I'm like, let me. Bink. <laughs> Just a little bit. What's next? Um, safety, some of those safety goggles on four Charlie. It must be the last pair. Yeah. Let me go see what I knocked down. SG. Should I knock a pop down? Ugh. Okay, he looks okay. All right, I think it's. I don't see any. I don't see any new dents. Uh, what, what, what am I looking for? I'm thrown off. Poor Charlie S G goggles. Oh, the glasses. It's S G, and that means we have one pair left of C R's. Hey, we actually did all right with these. We must have sold a dozen of these things. Yeah. Maybe ten. I don't know. Those sold for eight dollars and eighty nine cents. Okay, cool. We have a hat and half box. Right, let's see. I know, it's it's, uh, it's, a Hurley it's right here. You pung. I don't know what you pung? What does that mean? I don't know. I'll say that again. Isn't We're that, this is a family channel, Candace. Is I'm that the sure. brand name? No. Uh, yeah, it must be. It's a Hurley Surf and Enjoy hat. Thirteen thirty-four for that. Okay. Okay. I've been packing away. Candace's been listing away. Here's the. Uh, those are the ones that I just packed this last round. Yep get those out there i think these i'm gonna pack these in a minute i think there's a good chance they're gonna be ups i don't know how tall is that it's like about maybe 13 inches or let something. me see yeah i mean i do i do have to pack it carefully of course no it's not they're protected inside in styrofoam but you yeah know, we'll, still... ugh, we'll see see now this is this is what i'm running into uh, I want to talk about this for just a minute. The ground advantage thing. So, how are y'all liking ground advantage? I like it. It's you, less options trying to figure out. It's do simple. I, yeah, do I do this or that? Which one do I pick? It's simple, right? Mm -hmm. it, it really has simplified things. Yeah. So, yeah, simplicity is the thing, right? Like, mm -hmm. how many, like, unless something's over like a cubic foot, then we're looking at UPS, right? Right. That hasn't changed. And then if something's media, of course, it'll go media rate. I mean, you still have to decide between priority and ground advantage, but we just decided to go ground advantage across the board. 
because um, priority is only going to maybe be better if they're close to you within a couple of regions from what I what right. I, how uh, I think zones. it's yeah it's called zones, zones yeah, yeah. Um, but you, you have no way of predicting where your seller your buyer is going to be right so we just decided because of that we're just going to do ground advantage across the board right and there's yeah. some um, every now and then like you can see that pile of packages there everyone paid ground advantage that bottom box though um, the size of the that's the uh, the Mickey Halloween oh, purse, yeah. is that Mickey yeah yeah Mickey Jack Lantern yeah Mickey Jack Lantern purse thing that the priority boxes just fit that better so I didn't have I don't have I, that's one of my issues with ground advantage I don't have like a lot of boxes in that size and that's what I need to change like I'm gonna have to start buying 12 12 12 boxes or something we like that about that yeah we need to pick which, up some more boxes yeah. which kind of sucks that's the part that sucks and that might be what the post office is doing here like they might be weaning us off of their free boxes by you know like getting out of that game altogether. i don't know but uh yeah we are definitely going to be increasing our spend on boxes every month so that's a factor yeah. but the simplicity though like you remember how in the past like it would be like oh you know what we could probably put that in a box resize it and slide it into a pad of flat rate, all that stuff we don't even think about that anymore even with clothing we just put in ground advantage and the weight yeah and nine times out of ten it's going to be cheaper than a pad of flat rate anyways or if it's not it's within a dollar usually you right know, it's pretty insignificant and the good thing about ground advantage is if you go up if like there's no there's no service below ground advantage so you you pretty much like if you go if you use ups or you use um priority, priority instead you have the flexibility to do that if it's cheaper or if it just makes more sense or if you just want to or whatever you pretty much have the all shipping options available yeah because at that point you're just upgrading their their shipping it's either going to be an upgrade or a lateral yeah like whenever you advertise priority postage and you go ups that's officially kind of a downgrade yeah. because priority is considered expedited and ups ground is not right so that's another good thing about the ground advantage is in the in those cases because sometimes sometimes like candace said priority is uh not just a little like i've seen several times where it's like 880 ground advantage and seven dollars or seven dollars and 20 cents uh priority and this one is maybe going pr fairly close to us it's good yeah uh, carolina or something yeah. I, I think that's where it it's is it's not going like across the country no well i actually I, I think i paid like 50 cents more or something to do that but you're using their box but i'm using their box so it's a wash yeah right because like a box that size ain't gonna cost me 50 cents probably gonna cost me 75 to a dollar yeah right so yeah i mean i i, I like it though I, I really like the simplicity part because like anything we sell zero pound zero ounces up to one ounce up to what i think was it 70 or something 70 pounds i mean we're not going to go that high we're not doing that because that's going to be ups at that point but that would also be in a box bigger than 12 12 12 pretty much 12 12 12 and under is ground advantage now yeah. something else i wanted to mention is that um if you haven't used pirate ship in a while because you found it didn't make much sense because it used to be pirate ship would only be cheaper um, if you use priority cubic rate right and i found the cases where priority cubic made sense for us were so rare because usually when something was that like that size it was going first class package anyways and i, I just found it, it wasn't that often i was using it but you need to look again because i want to say like just in that pile i think there's three or four of those packages that are going ground advantage cubic there is such a thing as that uh that could save you 50 cents on up for a package 50 cents couple bucks whatever um so for me that's worth it I've seen so many times where we're saving a pretty good bit of money and some of the priority is even cheaper. 
So if you haven't tried Pirate Ship in a while, uh, I recommend you give it a shot again just to see if you, you would save a lot of money. We're saving probably... Um, we probably save it enough today to offset a pretty good portion of the boxes we're buying. So keep that in mind. All right, so we had we sold six Torley. One of them's gonna go out tomorrow because it came in this morning, but that's like every Monster High doll we've sold in the last few days, days has been Torley. I don't know what's going on with that, but I'm happy. The problem is we only had one here, so we're gonna have to go to storage and pick up the other. So we're gonna go ahead and make sure the one that came in on Friday gets out today. And yeah, but the other ones will probably get out today too, but yeah. there is a chance they might not. Right, so yeah, we're gonna go ahead and uh, get these last couple of things packed up and then we're gonna run to storage and pick up more Monster High. Yeah, I think we could probably make it on time. Uh, we have one more, uh, oh, one more thing to pull three. too. Yeah. So I already pulled it down because I replaced it with those speakers which the speaker sold too. I actually have, when I listed them, I knew I, I had to have more Big Bubble, America Bubble Boy, <laughs> link down below. I had to have more Big Bubble. Uh, I wanted more Big Bubble to ship them. And I just don't have it. So whenever I listed it, I was smart enough to uh, do three-day handling. It They sold, the speaker sold last night. Yeah. So I could ship them today. Uh, instead, I'm waiting on my big bubble from American Bubble Boy link down below to come in, and then I'll get those out. I have up to Wednesday to uh, to ship them. I'll probably go ahead and drop a message to the buyer just to let them know, hey, waiting on packing supplies so I can make sure I pack these safely before you know I send them out. That, yep. That's why I'm not shipping today. But uh, yeah, I don't have to ship today. Uh, oh, the thing frame. we're pulling, frame. frame. Yeah, I'm trying to talk too much. This is an Alice Pack frame with kidney pad, 1998 kidney pad. Frame's in good shape. Sold, for sold it for 50. Decided to sell it separate from the Alice Pack itself, especially since i um, pretty sure it wasn't together originally. Originally, yeah. 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 So uh, that is everything that we are shipping out from the weekend. So let me go ahead and get this pack because, like we said, uh we got to go to storage and get the rest of these and try and get them out today too okay i finally got everything packed and everything's out candace actually brought molly to her second band camp of this summer and this is dropped the, this is the marching camp because yeah. she's going to high school so she's gonna be in a marching band now so that's exciting that she's actually gonna not just be sitting in bleachers playing right <laughs> But uh, while Candace also brought the UPS package while she did that, and Carrier came and got all the rest of them too, um, so everything's done. It, I was, I should have packed. I didn't pack those things we pulled last night, and I should have because I ended up packing them for a good portion of the day. Um, I did go and look at the um, comments on the last video, and I found a really good, a really good question or more of a statement. I don't know. Uh, I thought it was interesting. I thought it was well well written and it's definitely something to think about. We've all talked about it a bunch So uh, and I didn't Candace is cold on this. I, I just picked one out. She hadn't heard it yet. Yep, but this is from JFM 1115 Do you think eBay has shot themselves in the foot by increasingly focus on focusing on pushing promoted listings? Essentially, they have alienated both buyer and seller and given away market share by artificially inflating prices on their platform. Sellers get alienated by having their items sit due to not wanting to increase the portion of fees they fork over to eBay, resulting in less sales and less enthusiasm for the platform. eBay already has high fees, and to put the work in just to have your items buried or not show up is not a testament to long-term partnership. I think a lot of sellers have dipped their toes in other platforms or avenues and it clearly and it is clearly affecting eBay. Less quality items and higher prices in turn push buyers to follow the sellers to the other platforms for better prices and items. eBay seems to be losing ground and their answer seems to be to increase fees and provide less service on a platform that already seems to be dwindling. They are not Amazon, and they are losing the collectible market more and more to the Macaris and whatnots of the web. Is eBay the first Sears of the internet age of retail, refusing to change 
because of the perception of being the big dog in the industry. So first thing I want to I want to mention is eBay already has high fees. I would say like if you, if you if you take out promoted listings, this is my opinion. If you take if like if you don't promote at all and you don't pay for any extra add-ons or anything, right? And they just get their final value fee. I actually, in my opinion, it's fair for what you get access to all those people and access to that platform and people are, buyers feel relatively safe buying on eBay because they know if something does go wrong, eBay will have their back. I think the, like the standard fees eBay charges, I don't think they're, I, I don't consider them high. I don't know what do you could like obviously we don't know we don't want to pay any fees at all of course i mean no i don't considering all the um opportunities you have like how many people you're it puts your product in front of right now as far as promoted yeah i think they have gotten greedy and i would we do we promote we do promote we hate it but we kind of feel like we have to. we promote at five percent yeah typically and we, we kind of feel like we have to um i wish they would just do away with it to make it an even playing field, you know, I mean, but... Uh. But here's the thing. They can't, like, now they're kind of trapped. They are. Right? Yeah. Because the stockholders see that money rolling in, and their answer, like, if they see revenues dropping, they feel like, oh, well, we need to make more add-ons for, for the sellers to, like, they, instead, like, it's backwards thinking. Instead of like trying to monetize the sales that they have now, and keep their more and keep their sellers, right? Right. Well, sellers are a dime a dozen, you know. Yeah. Like, but it, instead of instead of trying to get more buyers and more sellers to the platform, they're trying to find ways, more ways to monetize the sales they already have. Yeah. They're trying to like bleed, bleed. What? What? Draw. What? What is that? drawing blood from a turnip or a stone uh, yeah. or something i don't know yeah. i don't like but they're trying to like that 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 lemon has already been squeezed right you know go find more lemons to squeeze don't squeeze that same old lemon more go get some more lemons that's a good analogy right yeah but and you know actually i saw a question in the uh in the reseller water cooler today to you know that kind of goes with the fees thing they're talking about their they're considering um, starting a Shopify store, you know? And I guess to sell like resell items like we get at garage sales and yeah. their stores, state sales, whatever. And um, if you if you think eBay is expensive, like their normal, their standard fees, try opening one of those and paying all the marketing costs it'll take if you if it'll even work to drive traffic to drive traffic to it yeah and then tell me how expensive ebay fees are right right, right. but no i agree now i think that anything here, here's the way i look at the like promoted listings anything like when a buyer comes to ebay and they're search for something right eBay should always try to show them the best item for them. Not the one that's the most profitable, maybe, mm -hmm. but the item that will make that customer the happiest. That they will be more than likely to buy. To buy passing it and to enjoy mm -hmm. and to want to have that experience again. Instead of putting, like, maybe you have, may, let's say you have seller A who's got a lot of history of providing awesome customer service on eBay. I, I think we do, you know? And then you have seller B, who started last month, doesn't really know how to pack very well. You know, if anything ever comes up, they're gonna try and slither out of it. Like, you know, like if there's a, you know, something gets damaged in shipping or something like that. Not looking to do any of that. Don't have a history of, the, of great customer service. And let's say we're both selling the same item and it costs $20 no matter if they buy it from us or from, uh, we'll just call them a bad seller, okay? Let's just, not all new sellers are bad. I'm not saying that. Yeah. But let's just say there's, analogy. we're a good seller and we're selling our item for 20. They're a bad seller. They're selling their item for 20, right? Same item. Mm -hmm. Let's say it's brand new, right? 
and the potential customer is encouraged to buy their item because they only because they're promoting it higher than we are even though the value to the customer the customer experience the uh it in bad. the impact on the ebay brand because like anytime someone has a bad experience with a seller on ebay that person doesn't look at like shed that person's not going to go around and tell people yeah i bought from shed flips i had a horrible experience what are they going to say I, I got this thing off of ebay off of ebay yeah so they it, it's not it, it it really like in a perfect world it should be um the sale should happen based on merit and not like artificial for artificial Whoever reasons like that the highest premium right yeah and it's just like youtube like you like the youtube algorithm uh at least in the past and they're starting to do some pay to play stuff too now but in the past like youtube is kind of cool because it's it's like democratizes um people's videos or, or content and the the cream will rise to the top that's the idea right everyone has a shot and ebay i mean youtube uh they are incentivized to put the best videos they in figured, front they figured it out like if a video is performing well they kind of push it they show it more yeah right to to people yep. and it's like it's based on performance it's based on like yeah exactly like it's fair yeah you know and that's better for everybody it's better for that means that viewers will stay longer on youtube because they're seeing content they enjoy and like and the content creators that are doing well get more positive reinforcement to keep doing that right and the ones that aren't doing a great job well now they can look at the people that are doing a little better and get some takeaways and maybe they can step up their game and do better as well they can't just buy their way out of it right. you know like and i think long term i think promoted listings will hurt ebay it will hurt sellers it will hurt buyers because they're not going to get the best deal or buy or have the best experience. So I agree with you 100%, but I don't know how they get out of it. Yeah, I mean, it's like you got to play the game, you know? But how do they, How does eBay get out of it? Like, they have shareholders. I don't think they can. If they go to their shareholders and say, okay, we're going to stop this feature that is bringing in this much <laughs> right. revenue a year, they're going to be like, what? Are you yeah. smoking? Right. Yeah. I've often, I, I was actually asked Candace this the other day. I was like, I wonder if, you know, like we promote it 5%. I was like, I wonder if instead of promoting it 5%, what if we just like stop promoting and then did 5% off? Like lowered our, our just list, lowered the lowered prices. The listing price by 5%. Yeah. How would that affect things? Yeah. You know? But uh, then other sellers get mad because you're undercutting the market. <laughs> Well, I don't, I, you know what? I have never, ever, ever cared about that. Yep. I've never cared about another seller when it comes to pricing something because that seller don't care about me. They're not Promise gonna, you. Yeah, they're not going to pay our bills. No, they're not going to cut you in. You know, <laughs> oh, good job, pal. Because like we, we, we are one-off sellers. So we're in all categories a little bit at a time, just dipping our toe in and getting out, dipping our toe in and getting out. Uh, we're going to take the money and run in most cases. Yep. I mean, that, I'm not saying we're trying to undercut the market because I certainly don't feel like we do. But in the event we want to, I I give no S's about that. Like, I, I don't care. Like, when it comes to that, like, we are trying to make money for us. Yep. In the long <laughs> run, it's whatever's best for our business. <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> but, man, that that's way off topic. Um, not really. Yeah. I, I think any any kind of an uh, look artificial i think that's the word any type of any type of input into a market which isn't just isn't just set on matching every customer with the best item for them to buy for them i think is not going to be good for anybody long term are you looking for a green frisbee? Well, let me show you this red frisbee. This first. red one that they're they're promoting at twenty percent. So right. you know here, you know like that's a bad experience, right? Like that's not good. Yeah. 
And they, they probably won't buy it anyway. Or if they do, they won't be happy with it. I really wanted a green one. But okay, eBay, I'll buy it. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I agree. I just don't know what the answer is other than if we get like um, a really great CEO that comes in and just cleans house and shakes it up. Yeah. But, and I also, also I question like, I don't know what the impact of Macari and whatnot are on eBay. Yeah, you... I, I feel like most people that are selling on eBay are starting to go to those other platforms, but they're not stopping their eBay. No, you can't. Now, there are new people going to these other platforms that have never done eBay, but I don't think people are, for the most part, just leaving eBay to go to these other platforms. Uh, the only one, like, if, if you have a, a big following, whatnot, I could see, I, I know a lot of people do only whatnot, but that's different because that's more of monetizing content, right? Like, yeah. that's not so much about, like, buying and selling in a market. Just, like, it, it's different. It's based on personality and following and all that. But, like, Macari, I, I, I'm trying to picture someone selling full-time that just sells on Macari. Yeah. And there, there's no way. For my, unless we're doing it wrong. <laughs> From my experience, it's not possible. And Poshmark has been around a, a long time. Yeah. And I know there are people that, like, go heavy Poshmark. And I can see that if, you, if you're if you mainly a clothing seller. I can see that. I can see it, too. But I also think... I think most people even, even use Poshmark as a secondary platform. Yeah. For the most part. I know that I'm not... I'm not saying everyone. The full-time sellers. But I, I, I mean, there's still not a site out there... That rivals eBay. Yep. So not, you don't not to get you the audience in front of your product. It's not too late for them. But yeah, I don't see. They need to come up with something else besides AI descriptions. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, they need to come up with something else besides, you know, like their focus should be on getting new people to the plat, new buyers to the platform, and making money that way instead of trying to squeeze more money out of the sales they already have. Because that's going to end up drying up. Yeah. Like, uh, like you said. I just thought that was a interesting, interesting comment, well written, and I I agree with just about all of it. Yeah. So, uh, been a long day, and I think we're gonna. Oh, it's Sarah's birthday today. She's we're gonna celebrate 21, that. Yeah. Twenty one years old. We're gonna yeah. celebrate that today, and it is time for us to get out of here. So. Thanks a bunch for watching, and we will see y'all again very soon. Let us know down below what you think about JFM 1115's comments. And I, I mean, I don't want to be all negative. Um, maybe some ideas about what eBay could do to get out of this cycle they're in. Yeah. That promoted listing thing, man. Whew. As soon as you're, as soon as you can artificially put yourself above the right purchase for someone. It's going to make the platform worse. That's that's my take on it. Yeah, so, I agree. Thanks so much for watching. We will see you all again very soon. Bye, y'all. Bye.